Welcome to a large model showman's engine, part 30, making an improved whistle mounting with a takeoff point for a steam siren plus a visitor in the garden. My first attempt at a whistle adapter was fine, but unfortunately the first adapter was only really designed to hold the whistle and allow me to put some air into the boiler. The second adapter I made was okay, but I wasn't happy with it because it was made from alum bronze and I really wasn't sure that the silver soldering was 100%. So here I am making the third and final adapter. I have a piece of hexagon bar fitted into the lathe chuck, and here I'm threading the bottom of it 3 8 of an inch by 40 threads per inch. I don't need to use a tailstock die holder, this one works perfectly well, provided I chase it with the tailstock chuck. This keeps everything in line so the thread is accurate. After cutting the thread, it's time to centre drill the part. Here I'm doing just that. And now it's time to use the twist drill to drill a hole down the centre. I need this fitting to pass as much steam as possible, so the hole is quite large, but not too large as to weaken the fitting. After I've drilled the hole deep enough, in this clip I'm parting off the bit that I want. The parting tool is squeaking a bit, which reminds me I do need to sharpen it. That's the main part of the fitting made. The next part to make is the thread that screws into the fitting at 90 degrees to it. I'm threading this part 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. I only threaded the bottom part of the adapter 3 8 by 40 threads per inch because that is the thread into the cylinder block. Here I'm spinning the die off the part and finally I end up with a 3 8 by 32 right angle junction. Now I need a hole down the middle of this, so once again, as always, centre drill it first, but this time with the difference, the centre is much deeper. This is to accommodate the union cone that's fitted to the pipe. Here, once again, I'm drilling a hole all the way down the middle. This is going to take a quarter inch diameter pipe, so I need the hole down the middle of the fitting to be at least as big as the internal diameter of the pipe. And once again, with the part complete, it's a simple job, to part off the component from the main part. Now it's time to clean up the parts using some 400 grit wetter dry sandpaper. I drilled a cross hole in the hexagon part and threaded it 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. I want to make sure that this right angle fitting is very secure. This clip shows the part after silver soldering and after the clean up and it's a really good connection between the right angle part and the main part. Threaded and silver soldered, definitely a belt and braces operation. I also silver soldered a pipe, specially bent, to allow connection to the siren and also to the right angle connection on the adapter. While I was doing this job, there was quite a commotion outside the workshop and when I looked out of the window, this is what I saw. It's a baby crow, and it's walking around my picnic table making a great deal of noise. I gave the baby crow a crust of bread, but it wasn't impressed by that. It's looking up at the sky and calling to its parents, and you can hear them calling back. What a delightful small creature, who wasn't afraid of me in the slightest. It seemed to appreciate the water that I'd put down a couple of days earlier. And you will notice that it's keeping its eye on me at all times. I was a bit concerned that maybe it couldn't fly and it was just wandering about on the picnic table waiting for a cat to seize it. I'm really surprised that a creature like this isn't really frightened of something my size. But look, it's yawning. The crow eventually flew off up to the roof and I went back in the workshop. The next part of the job is to make a mounting bracket for the siren. And I machined the main body of the bracket from a piece of gunmetal. This will need a steam inlet and a steam outlet to the siren and some sort of a mounting. This is what I came up with. The siren mounting, which is 1 8 BSP, a British standard pipe thread, is the thread on the top. The lower part is made from phosphor bronze and that is threaded 3 8 by 26 threads per inch. This will screw into the cylinder. Let's have a quick look at the siren. I bought this from a company not too far from here. The company is called JLD Fittings. The address is on screen and I recommend that you have a look at what they sell. They make some nice things. I had a close look at the siren and it's really well made. 
The thing I've found in the past with steam sirens is they don't run too well on compressed air, but this one seems to run reasonably well using low pressure, low volume compressed air. I look forward to the sound that it's going to make when I feed it with steam when it's fastened to the engine. This steam fitting is only temporary because it's not the right thread. This is 3 8 by 32 threads per inch, but the thread in the siren is 1 8 BSP. I'm sure that will be fine when it's running on steam. There is a hole in the cylinder at the top, and this brass plug is normally in the hole for no reason. I made and fitted a much longer plug. Here it is. I'm now looking at different ways to mount the whistle. This is the gunmetal block I showed you earlier. And this is before I machined it. This was a real problem. The lever from the safety valve is in the way. I intend to fit another piece of chain exactly the same as the chain I have on the whistle because it's good strong stuff and it doesn't look like a necklace and it's not going to break when I pull on it. But I'm going to have to rethink the mounting of the steam siren. Not only is the lever on the safety valve fouling the siren, it's not far enough out. But I have an idea, and I will show you this in the next episode. Here's another shot of the parts before I silver solder them together. This gives me a little bit of flexibility. I need to bolt this mounting to an extension arm which is bolted to the cylinder. My friend Bob Brocklehurst, who runs Pugney's Light Railway in Wakefield, it's currently making me a special riding truck, and when it came over the other week, we were just looking at ideas and made a quick mock-up of the idea of the design. In the finished assembly, the parts will look something like this, although these are not the actual parts. I will sit on a seat on a two-wheeled truck behind the traction engine with my feet on motorcycle footrests, which should be OK and quite comfortable. More about this very soon. And that's it for this episode. I'd just like to say stay safe and well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists, and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch, and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.